Our recreation in baptism is an image of the Genesis creation, where the Spirit of God moved over the waters. Both Mark's Gospel and the story in Acts make clear that it is the Spirit's movement that distinguishes Jesus' baptism from John's. The Spirit has come upon us as upon Jesus and the Ephesians, calling us God's beloved children and setting us on Jesus' mission to recreate the world in the image of God's vision of justice and peace.
Hello, and welcome to worship on Sunday, January 10th of 2021. A few announcements to make before we get started with the worship service today. Um, please keep Doris Van Tile in your prayers. Um, Doris is Rick Van Tile's mother, who had a fall and um, is undergoing surgery to repair ankles. Um, so please keep uh, Doris and Rick and his, their entire family in your prayers. Also, please keep Loretta O'Connor, a friend of Carol Stevens, in your prayers this week. Uh, Loretta is uh, suffering from the COVID vaccine and is not um, expected to make it through the, that journey. Um, so please keep Loretta and her family and Carol and her family in your prayers. Um, offering envelopes are available to those who would like to have those. Um, if you want them, please let me know. Or if you do not want them, if you have received them in the past and don't want them this year, please let me know that at D-U-D-L-E-Y at firstlutheranKC.com. We would appreciate it. It saves us expense for buying those envelopes and also for mailing them to you. So we would be uh, appreciative of the fact that you let us know whether or not you want those envelopes. Uh, Year-end statements will be emailed approximately January 15th. Um, if you need a printed copy of that statement, please let me know at the same address uh, that I mentioned above, Dudley at firstlutheranKC.com. Uh, we hope you are all staying healthy and safe during these trying times. Um, please make sure that you are paying attention to the e-blast that we send out every Wednesday, approximately Wednesday. Um, and are keeping up with the information from First Lutheran. If you need any of that information or need help with that email, please email me um, or let us know if there's anything that you potentially need um, in this trying time. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, happy January. At least we're in a new year. We hope to see you soon. Thank you, enjoy the service. Hello and welcome to worship for this festival of the baptism of our Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ, work for us, work for us, Christ, God's 
First reading is from the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the 19th chapter of Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Word of the Lord. Today's Gospel lesson is from the first chapter of Mark. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This past Wednesday was the Feast of Epiphany, the day the church celebrates the coming of wise men from the East as they brought gifts to the infant Christ. And by extension, celebrates also that the good news was meant even for Gentiles. And on that festival day, as I walked in the living room, Autumn, my oldest daughter, was there. And I felt the need to tell her, there are some bad things happening in the world today. And Autumn, though she is only 13, is wise beyond her years, and she said, yes, Dad, there's probably always something bad going on somewhere. And I said, no, I mean something particular. And I told her about what was happening in Washington. Later, my younger two were watching the news with us and seeing those images that have been repeated over and over, people stealing, people breaking glass. 
My children had questions that were difficult to answer. Why? What did they want? What does it mean? For myself, there was one phrase that kept repeating in my memory from my first look at the news, a reporter showing the violence and reminding the viewers that these images were not from some far-off, war-torn nation. This, he said, is the United States of America. Sometimes things happen that make us question who we are. And there's opportunity there. Opportunity to grow. It's a holy ground moment that gives us pause and makes us look around. And the blessing to be found in this past week's events are in our nation's response to what happened. This, we said in one voice, is not us. This is not how things should be. This is not what we do. In our second lesson for today, Paul runs into a group of early Lutherans. We know that they're Lutherans because they have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And as we all know, Lutherans tend to want to ignore the work of the Holy Spirit for fear of seeming too enthusiastic. And yet, despite this proclivity, many early Lutheran theologians wrote at length about the work of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. And in that tradition, there was what was called an order of salvation, more or less a list of things that happen in the life of a person of faith because of the Holy Spirit's intervention. They don't always happen in the same order, and sometimes two or more will happen at the same time, but they're still helpful in understanding how God tends to work in our lives. And the second step in the Lutheran version is called illumination. It refers to the reality that God will sometimes shine a light on some aspect of our lives by one means or another so that we can see it more clearly. What we see when God shines His light can be surprising, even scary, but when we see things clearly, we then begin the third step in the order of salvation, repentance. Repentance is nothing more and nothing less than when we start to act based on our new vision of the way things are, how things should be, and what we're called to do. It's living with a renewed identity, having seen things more clearly. It's not always a pretty process. Sometimes we stumble in the dark for a while. Sometimes we, like the prodigal son, end up sitting in pig slop, hungry and alone, before the light comes on. And we say with him, I will get up and return to my father. But when the light comes on, it is a beautiful thing indeed. A beautiful thing to know exactly where we don't want to be. To have discovered for sure who we are not. So that we can get up and be who we are. On today's festival, the baptism of our Lord, our gospel lesson is what is called a theophany, a self-revelation of God. God the Father speaks from heaven. The Spirit descends as a dove, and Jesus the Son comes up out of the waters of baptism. The whole trinity, all three persons, are manifested in this simple ritual. People who have had their coffee already, including John the Baptist and versions of the story written by the other evangelists, wonder why Jesus would be baptized since he had nothing from which to repent. But this story seems to be less about Jesus' repentance and more about Jesus' identity. In this baptism, who he is is confirmed in miraculous signs. Jesus isn't at all finished making a statement about his identity. This task begins with baptism, is not concluded by it. After his baptism, the Bible tells us that the Spirit that same spirit that had descended upon him drove him into the wilderness where the devil tested him. If you are the Son of God, like you heard in your baptism, turn these stones into bread. If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down from this height and allow the angels to bear you up. If you are the Son of God, take for yourself what you deserve, all these kingdoms of the world which I will give you if you fall down and worship me. 
Theologians have generalized these temptations as the temptation to hedonism, egoism, and materialism, or more simply, pleasure, pride, and greed. And in each case, Jesus listens to the voice of the Father instead, lives out his God-given identity rather than the one that the devil tries to hand him. Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness is an echo of the 40 years that Israel wandered and is also for us a picture of discipleship. The world can seem as a wilderness where we can lose our way and find it, where we can remember who we are and where we are and we can forget also. Thankfully for those of us who follow after Jesus, the fathers of the early church decided that we need only one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. If we had to get rebaptized every time we betrayed ourselves, First Lutheran would be a soggy place indeed. Instead, we remember that we are baptized. We remember that despite the fact that we sometimes act like people who we are not, that we are still who God says we are in baptism. Beloved, forgiven, claimed, embraced, welcomed, empowered, and filled with God's Holy Spirit. That spirit that descended on Jesus and compelled him to go into the wilderness to prove who he was rests on us as well and is still compelling us by shining God's light on all the dark places, helping us to see things rightly, helping us to know who we are, and giving us the strength to act accordingly. On some days, the wilderness seems too wide to cross. The 40 days, too long to endure. On some days, it seems that there are more devils than angels in the wilderness. And on some days, the voices that are not God's, telling us who we are and what is possible, are so loud, and the voice of God seems so quiet. Some days, the road back to the Father, from the pig slop we have put ourselves in, seems like too far to go. But because of what God has done, is doing, and promises yet to do, it is every glimmer of doubt which is the illusion. Sin is spiritual amnesia, where we forget who we are as a nation, as a church, as individual believers. And our baptism is the cure, reminding us that the way back to the Father is only as long as we make it. Angels came to wait on Jesus when his trial was done. When the prodigal made it back home, his father killed the fatted calf, and there was celebration. May we too celebrate that the Holy Spirit illuminates our hearts and minds, shows us the truth, and helps us get up and be who we really are. In the name of Jesus, and to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Now let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sin. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all that God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our nation, for wisdom, for peace, for an end to violence and strife, for our elected officials, for all who suffer from injustice, for our police and first responders. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For First Lutheran, as we worship separately and yet together, for students learning in the time of virus, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God, experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. As we enjoy some music, please remember your support of First Lutheran Church, either by mailing your check into the church office, signing up for online giving, or giving by text message. And as always, your support is greatly appreciated. <laughs>
Now let us pray using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.